When it comes to discussing some of the greatest years for video game releases, there seem to be a few standout years that typically pop up on most people's lists. 1997 is always a hot contender for nostalgic gamers, with its hard-hitting Big 3 of GoldenEye, Castlevania Symphony of the Night, and Final Fantasy VII, until it was topped just one year later by an even bigger three in 1998. 2000 and 2004 equally can stake a claim for the undisputed year of the sequel, with Diablo 2, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2, and Majora's Mask trading blows with the likes of Half-Life 2, Halo 2, and GTA San Andreas, among others. Looking for a more modern example? Nintendo carried 2017 into gaming history by releasing both Breath of the Wild and Super Mario Odyssey in the same year flanked by games like Cuphead, Persona 5, and Horizon Zero Dawn. Then there was the year that gave us StarCraft, Resident Evil 2, Tekken 3, and the Western release of Pokemon Red and Blue. Wait, this was also 1998? <laughs> Yo, pack it up. End of discussion. Everyone has their own spin on their respective best year in video games, but there's one that I rarely ever see mentioned among any favorites. Which is crazy in my opinion because it's a year that took us inside a highly anticipated follow-up turned Game of the Year nominee, gave us a hyper-focused fresh take on a classic genre, delivered a thought-provoking first-person adventure unlike most things we had witnessed, provided a best-in-class example of storytelling we couldn't wait to watch unfold, introduced the world to its favorite farming simulator, wait, we're not, we're not talking about these games? It's a year that took us inside a highly anticipated follow-up turned Game of the Year nominee, a hyper-focused fresh take on a classic genre, a thought-provoking first-person adventure unlike most things we had witnessed, a best-in-class example of storytelling we couldn't wait to watch unfold, introduced the world to its favorite farming simulator. Ah, uh, okay. 2016 was an absolutely unbelievable year for indie gaming. So much so it almost feels like either a far-fetched coincidence or a stroke of dumb luck that such a high number of top quality indie titles came out in just one 12 month span. And it's not just the top contenders that make it so impressive. There's a lot of depth on this year's resume as well, from innovative takes that push traditional genre ideas to wacky experiences you'd never see in a AAA title. In other words, it did what indie gaming is best at, and it did it in a prolific manner. So let's throw some evidence at this argument straight away. Here's a look at what exactly made this year so special with a rapid fire rundown of some of the best games it can lay claim to. Inside gets top billing here as the title that made the biggest critical splash in a sea of great indie games. It built upon the foundation laid by its predecessor Limbo and turned it into a legitimate top tier experience. For my money, there are still few games that have reached the same heights of grim, atmospheric world building that Inside has, and it did so in a tight package full of thoughtful puzzles and diverse gameplay. The Witness is a masterful blend of progressive puzzle solving, intriguing exploration, and abstract storytelling all rolled into one avant-garde production. The developers expertly craft more and more complex variations on a single mechanic as you progress, all while guiding you through a gorgeous and memorable small open world. If you don't like puzzle games, you'll probably hate The Witness, but if you do even a little, this title remains one of the best ever made. First person narrative adventures have always been an important part of the indie gaming scene, and Firewatch stamped its place among the best of them when it was released in 2016. Firewatch isn't as much about what you're doing in the game, but what you experience as you're doing it. I found a bra. And with its unique emphasis on building likable characters and exploring their relationship entirely through radio conversations, Firewatch tells a compelling story not just because of what happens in the game, but also because of the way it's told. Hey, Flapjack, why don't you wait your turn before I bounce your face off a dumpster? Hyperlight Drifter is a rock-solid action RPG that contains satisfying and varied combat, trend-setting art direction, and well-executed pacing. Seemingly hitting at just the right time, this is a game that combined elements of Hades, Breath of the Wild, and a short hike before those games were even released, and to this day is a great example of breathing fresh air into a classic formula and aesthetic. Here's a wild one. Did you remember that No Man's Sky was one of the most anticipated releases of all of 2016? And while it met a flat and frustrating initial release, in the years since it's gone on to become one of gaming's best comeback stories. Does 2016 deserve credit for what the game has turned into? 
I'll let you decide that one, but I'm not sure it matters because we're still going strong here. Oxenfree made a big impression on the indie scene this year with its nostalgically spooky story, unconventional art style, and emphasis on nailing conversation-driven dialogue. It's a lot to take in and adjust to. I'm, um... Fine. Is there like a question coming or what? It's short and simple, but still leads to a uniquely refreshing experience. Give it a shot. Indie titles are known for being inventive, but there might not be a game that better embodies that word than Super Hot, the slow motion first person brawler. This is another short lived experience, but it's a game you play and at first you're like, oh, okay, cool, I got it. And then you keep playing and you're like, oh, okay, there's a lot more to this than I thought. Overcooked is one of the best times you can have with a group of people. It's a quirky but killer concept for a party game, and its design all but ensures even the most well-organized teams are going to stumble into some hilarious moments. Another creative winner for 2016. And believe it or not, there were even more indie games released in this year that proved to be popular, innovative, and influential. Which makes it a great time to finally talk about 2016's ultimate and enduring Smash success, Stardew Valley. While Inside was certainly the year's marquee indie title initially, I don't think anybody quite understood at the time just what Stardew Valley would become. Stardew is, ultimately, the game that puts 2016 beyond the reach of any other year for me. It's a wildly popular title that has spawned a massive community reaching far beyond the game itself. From a thriving modding scene to fan art and board games to entire playlists comprised solely of songs that sort of kind of sound like music that might belong in the game. It's also been an undeniably influential piece of the gaming landscape since its release. In fact, outside of Dark Souls, I'm not sure I can think of a single game from the past 15 years that has single-handedly inspired so many iterations from other developers hoping to capture its magic. Stardew Valley was not the originator of the Slice of Life simulator. It wears its inspiration from games like Harvest Moon very openly but it more fully realizes nearly every element the genre is capable of more than any game before or since. And everything about it is so charming, you can't help but love it. And finally, it's kind of the ultimate indie success story, right? Stardew Valley was created, updated, and perfected by one guy. One person independently built this entire experience that has impacted the lives of millions of players. And many more than that when you account for the countless games it continues to influence. It's a classic title that's already beloved by many, yet I have a feeling its impact and place in the pantheon of all-time great games will only grow as time goes on. So that makes for one monster haul of great games. Beyond the individual titles themselves though, I'll also remember the indie scene from 2016 because of how thought-provoking it felt as a whole. Good indie games have always been a bit more intelligent than the content that traditional studios put out. They experiment with themes, art styles, narrative devices, and gameplay mechanics that many AAA games don't have the luxury of risking. And in 2016, we saw this theme pop up all over the place. The Witness made me think about how to tackle each new creative challenge, and about how I should probably watch more esoteric art house films or something. I'm not really sure. Inside made me think about this bizarrely intriguing world the developers created, truly making it feel like the story of my character was just one piece of something much bigger. Firewatch made me think about different mechanisms that can be used to tell a story, and on a deeper level, the mechanisms by which human relationships can form. Superhot made me think about thinking, then made me wonder if I should be thinking, then challenged my ability to think at all. In a year that saw most of its mainstream successes come from shooters and intense action games, albeit some really good ones, the indie scene in 2016 came through with numerous titles that challenged us to think, inspired us to wonder, and reinforced the fact that it's okay to be a little weird. So does all of this make 2016 the best year that indie gaming has ever seen? I think probably. But I've never been a big fan of best of lists, award shows, or any method for trying to force an absolute on a topic that's so subjective. Having said that, we've seen a whole lot of awesome indie titles released in the past decade, so I think it's only natural to raise the question, are there any other years that come close to this? And yeah, there might be, because the fact is the quality and importance of indie games seems to be growing more and more each year and developers in this space are consistently finding ways to fill the gaps that big budget studios shy away from, each year delivering experiences that push the industry to new heights. 
From a critical standpoint, 2019 probably brings the biggest one-two punch in Disco Elysium and Outer Wilds. Two titles that are pretty niche, but extremely well regarded by the people who enjoy these types of games. It was also the year of one of my personal all-time favorite indie games, the awe-inspiring puzzle platformer Grease. That's a pretty great top of the heap for one year of gaming. In 2018, Celeste hit on pretty much all cylinders, turning out to not only be an extremely polished and great playing game, but also an impactful one from a storytelling and inclusion perspective. Not to mention how fast it took off as part of the speedrunning community. This year also delivered in the variety aspect, providing hits that spanned vastly different genres like the highly acclaimed action roguelike Dead Cells, the fascinatingly unique spin on the detective genre Return of the Obra Dinn, and the endlessly playable colony simulator RimWorld. 2020, meanwhile, lays claim to what might be the actual single best game mentioned here in Hades. Hades was universally well received, is fun and accessible but also deep and replayable, and was nominated for many Game of the Year awards. So here's a year you have one of the legitimate powerhouse contenders from all of 2020, with other favorites like Paradise Killer, Factorio, and Fall Guys providing some impressive depth. Lastly, I know I'll hear some votes for 2015, which gave us the ultimate sports video game hybrid in Rocket League, as well as highly respected indie darlings Ori and the Blind Forest and Undertale. So yeah, we've had some really strong years for indie games, and luckily for all of us, things may only be getting stronger, as 2022 appears to have turned out to be another banner year for the underdogs. But I'm not sure there's any other year in history that saw the unusually high number of really quality and well-regarded indie games that 2016 did. It had what every winning team needs, undeniable talent at the top and depth off the bench that can go for days. And that's really the biggest difference, because I think you can pit Disco Elysium and Outer Wilds against Inside and The Witness and have a legitimate case for the former to come out on top. I think you can argue that the staying power and reach of Rocket League is just as strong as that of Stardew Valley's. I think it's fair to say that Shovel Knight and others do just as good a job at enhancing the retro formula as Hyperlight Drifter does. And I think you can make the case that Celeste and Hades are better than all of them. But to have so many quality titles in so many different genres that fill the needs of so many gamers, including many that are still played by large audiences today, it's just insane. I also want to point out that I know this video is about highlighting independent developers, but let me again remind you that this is also the year that gave us games like Overwatch, Hitman, Doom 2016, and Titanfall 2. Those are some really great and influential big studio games to pair with the incredible indie hall we were spoiled with that year. So next time you're compiling your own list or pondering the question, what was the all-time best year for video games, give 2016 a little love. It's likely not going to be remembered in the same way as a 1994, or a 2013, or a 1990, okay, all right, we get it. But one thing 2016 should be remembered for is being the year that independent developers stepped up hard and delivered us some of the most memorable and most thought-provoking experiences in recent memory and they did it in an abundance we can only hope to see sometime again soon. Hey, thanks for watching. If you couldn't tell, I'm a big fan of indie games and I think they deserve all the credit they get and more, especially now in a world of janky releases, questionable monetization, and soulless content padding we see in so many AAA titles. So if you'd like to see more videos on some of your favorite indie games and more, do me a favor and like this video, subscribe if you're really into this stuff, and leave me a comment letting me know which year has been your most memorable for the indie gaming scene. Maybe it was even this year.